Today's topic is what do you look for when you're hiring a criminal defense attorney to handle a murder case? If you have a loved one that's currently in custody or out of custody facing murder charges and you're looking to hire a criminal defense attorney here in Southern California, all of California here in San Diego, stick around. I think you're gonna like this video. My name is Dodd. I've been a criminal defense trial attorney here in Southern California since 2004. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm very sorry to hear because we're going to talk about what to look for when you're hiring a criminal defense attorney for a murder case. So if you're watching this video, there's a very high probability that somebody you know, a friend or a loved one has recently been arrested for murder and they're sitting in custody. Now, the most important thing to look for when you're hiring a attorney to handle a murder case is not what's on their website, okay? Because any attorney can go on a website and put all their accolades and all their reviews. Every attorney's website in this country looks good. They all look good, right? No one's gonna go and post a website online that doesn't look good. So every criminal lawyer has a very impressive website, okay? So number one, make sure your criminal defense attorney is a criminal defense attorney and you're not hiring this big firm and just one part of their practice is criminal defense and they're gonna have four or five different attorneys that do contracts and wills and trust and corporations and all these other areas of the law, personal injury. They're gonna be the ones touching your case. They can only do criminal defense. Their, your loved one's life is on the line. They can only practice criminal defense. I've been doing criminal defense exclusively for 19 years. That's all I do. And the reason being the consequences are too severe for me to even look at a contract or to look at a will and trust or to look at corporate law. I only do criminal defense. You want to make sure that the attorney you hire in a murder case has handled murder cases. Not this is their first murder case that they're going to handle and they're going to call other attorneys to figure out what to do on the case. Now listen, I get these calls all the time. I've taken four murder cases to jury trial. I've handled about 15 murder cases over my 19 years, which is a lot in comparison to other attorneys across the country. Most attorneys will go their entire career and not even handle a murder case, let alone do a murder trial. I've handled four murder trials. I've got not guilty verdicts at a murder trial. I beat a murder trial at a preliminary hearing in Los Angeles County. So the most important thing is get a criminal lawyer that handles murder cases who is not going to use your case as something for their resume to get experience. Your loved one, you, you're facing life. It's a murder case. It's that simple. Make sure you sit down with the attorney that's going to handle your case. Make sure when you go to their office, you're talking to the actual attorney that's going to step foot in court for you or your loved one at every single court appearance. They are not going to just send another attorney in their firm to just give them experience on how to handle a murder case. Now, murder cases are sensitive. They're difficult. There's a lot of stress involved in these cases. You want to make sure that the attorney you hire is not going to fall to the pressure, is not going to fall to the stress, is not going to just take you know what the DA says. Your attorney is going to have to file motions. Your attorney is going to have to fight the case. Your attorney is going to have to go to a preliminary hearing because typically on a murder case, there really are no deals. There really are, are no offers. And if there is an offer, uh, depending on the case, it's somewhere in the 
teens to 20 range. Sometimes, depending on the case, there is no offer at all because they want life in prison. So make sure that your attorney only handles criminal defense, has handled murder cases, more importantly, has been to trial. Now you ask me, well, Dodd, how do I know that the attorney is telling us the truth, right? Well, this attorney is telling me that, yeah, he's handled a murder trial. How do I know? Get the case number. Get the case name. Go to the courthouse and pull the file and see who's the attorney of record on that case. Did that case actually go to trial? Regardless of what the verdict is, not guilty, guilty. Did that attorney go to trial? Is that attorney's name on the court docket as the attorney of record? That's how you can confirm whether or not that attorney <clears throat> has actually done murder cases. You can go online, you can Google their name and see how many times their name pops up in the media. If you Google you know, my name, you will see that I've handled several high profile cases here in San Diego, whether they're murder, whether they're rape or other types of crimes, attempted murder. I've handled several high profile cases and you can confirm that because you can see my face on the news. And when you see me in my office, you'll know that's me. So you can confirm that that's me. So that's another way that you can confirm whether or not your attorney has handled these types of cases. And you also want to come and meet the attorney and you got to come up with a strategy in your case. Now, listen, in a murder case, there's a couple things. It's either self-defense, it wasn't you, or it was you, but what is it? Right? So if you're going self-defense, then you're going for an all-out acquittal, most likely. So in a self-defense case, if the jury finds that the self-defense was reasonable and you did not have to use more force likely than necessary and you're in imminent fear of bodily harm, you can walk out of there. Not guilty verdict. If they say that this was imperfect self-defense, that you had an honest but unreasonable belief, then you could go down on a voluntary manslaughter. That's still better than first degree murder or second degree murder. If you're saying it wasn't you, then your attorney is just going to argue throughout the entire trial that this wasn't you and that there's some other person that did it. And there's another defense called third party culpability. So if you have other evidence to prove that somebody else did it, you can present that evidence. It's called third party culpability. And you can get a jury instruction that talks about third party culpability. The next issue in a murder case is, okay, let's say it is you but it happened under a sudden quarrel or heat of passion and you have some defense there and you're gonna fight the case that this is not murder in the first degree premeditated, willful, deliberate. This is not second degree murder where you did not have the, where you had the intent to kill but it's not premeditated, willful or deliberate, that this is just voluntary manslaughter because there was this sudden quarrel, there was this heat of passion, there was this sort of provocation and that's the defense you're going in. And people say, well, why would, because the consequences for first degree murder, if there's no allegations attached, is 25 to life. Fifth, second degree murder with no allegations is 15 to life. Voluntary manslaughter is 11. Think about that. 11 years. So if you're charged with murder and you did commit the murder, but you have a provocation defense, you can go from a life sentence to a determinant 11 years if there are no allegations attached. Now, obviously, if there's a gun used or a knife used, there's other allegations attached, but I'm just giving you examples of how big it is to go to trial if you have a provocation defense or a self-defense claim or it wasn't you and you have a criminal defense attorney that knows how to handle these types of cases. I cannot stress the importance of that. 
I hope you liked this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you can get notified every time I put out a video. If you have any questions, give me a call, 619-814-5110, www.dodlaw.com. Have a great day.